Now, the Nigerian Senate is unhappy about the war situation between Hamas and Israel, which has resulted in the destruction of lives and property. Following a point of order jointly sponsored by Senator Adamu Alieru and Senator Somalia Kaup, the Senate urged the federal government to, of Nigeria to add its voice to that of the United Nations and other member nations to call for a permanent ceasefire. National Assembly correspondent Tijesu Adirye has details. Leader of the Senate. Federal lawmakers in the Nigerian Senate have joined their voice to thousands of people around the world calling for a permanent ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war situation. They consider the motion of public importance at Tuesday's plenary session and have expressed deep concerns over the conflict situation First as senators Friday. call for the intervention of the Nigerian government this to join calls for a ceasefire. The lawmakers say this brewing crisis may snowball into a deadlier situation that may affect other countries, including Nigeria. The Senate further note that many international communities have condemned the ongoing conflict and that if urgent steps are not taken to address the situation, the battle may spread to neighboring countries and then to the allies of Israel and Palestine. This is not acceptable. This is not good. It's not good for the modern world. For a world that has become sophisticated, has become more advanced, to now begin to witness this kind of atrocity is not something we should welcome. We should add our voices to that of responsible people over the world that Palestine and Israel should come together, accept the two-state solution accept the two-state solution for permanent peace to prevail in that region. I am commending uh, co-sponsors of this motion who supported it and of course the leadership of the Senate, SP and the DSP. President of the Senate, Senator Gatsui Lakpabiu, condemns the conflict in strong terms and appeals to his colleagues and the Nigerian government to treat the matter with a sense of urgency and collaborate with the United Nations and other countries to find a lasting solution. When we are discussing something that is so serious as loss of properties and children being murdered, we should take it seriously as a Senate. That's why I want to thank all of you for this resolution. And may God grant us peace. The Israel-Hamas war is a great concern for senators as they want the federal government to explore diplomatic channels and other possible means to achieve a permanent ceasefire and end the hostilities. Tijesu Adewi, TVC News, Abuja. All right, uh, we do not know yet uh, what diplomatic uh, efforts the government will be taking or making, but it is good to see government speaking with regards to this uh, matter coming out of Israel and uh, the Palestine uh, war, so to speak. Uh, but Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has often said that uh, he is not uh, seeking any solution as, as it is right now. He has said that uh, he is open to little pauses. They have occupied uh, the Gaza Strip, the heart of Gaza Strip as it is, uh, but they are because the UN has been complaining about uh, aid into Gaza. And so right now, the, it has been reported uh, that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is open to little, opening little access for aids to come in into the Gaza Strip. But the Palestine Authority, uh, through its president, Mahmoud Abbas, has said that uh, they are ready to, uh, for a political solution in the future, uh, they are willing to return to the enclave, talking about the Gaza Strip, because it was initially uh, occupied uh, by the Hamas's authority. Right now, Palestine Authority are ready to um, handle that, to occupy the enclave in, in future political solutions uh, towards uh, this uh, matter, and they are also calling for a ceasefire. The situation in the Gaza Strip is still uh, very horrifying, looking at the pictures, looking at uh, the commentaries. The United Nations and its affiliates are also, you know, maintaining their stance that it has become uh, worse than a humanitarian crisis. It's a month now, October 7th, or there, yes, on October 7th, yeah. uh, that was when um, the... 
um, militants. Yes, that was when they struck uh, into Israel, Israel and um, looking at the fallout, the casualty casualty figures at the moment, it's standing according to you know latest statistics at, at more than 11,700 uh, or thereabout, uh, with the majority of the casualty figures coming in from um, you know Gaza itself now and um, right from the beginning of this particular you know crisis the Nigerian government has always maintained the stance of you know peace peace mm. and that let there be um, you know a way that um, there will be no bloodletting on on either side and calling for dialogue calling for de-escalation of tensions and that appears to be the line that the Nigerian Senate is also towing uh, in this regard. And it is understandable, absolutely, because most of these casualties, especially in, in Gaza, are, you know, the, the young, are the elderly, children. are children, are, are, are women. And uh, when you look at the pictures, really, even if you, you want to side with any particular group, those pictures are, are, are really, are really heart-wrenching. Uh, but then it's still a matter of accusations and counter-accusations on both sides, of the two warring sides. Israel still maintains that these um, sites that is targeting are strongholds for Hamas and that Hamas is utilizing, uh, is using the civilian population in Hamas in, in Gaza as um, human shield. And mm. so, in fact, if you go to regular hospitals, if you go to refugee camps, there are underneath them, there are um, underground Hamas uh, terrorist camps. And so that, that, is, that, is, that is basically what um, they are trying on the part of Israel. It says it's trying to limit the number of civilian casualties, but then is accusing Hamas of, you know, trying to enlarge uh, the number of um, you know, civilian casualties and is targeting them. So uh, the stage that things are now, it's, it, it is indeed worrisome. And um, even the U.S. side, we understand that the U.S. government is now beginning to express um, reservations about um, uh, continued um, offensive, towards offensive the, yeah. so to speak, and is also asking that there shouldn't be another occupation uh, by Israel in, in the Gaza Strip. And so uh, right now, <clears throat> I think it's just better. It might, you know, give us, you know, a form of leeway as to maybe the world will now come to another agreement, this time around positive, on, on the way forward, on how to end the, the hostilities, especially for the sake of uh, the civilian population who are still in dire need of crucial aid. Absolutely. The level of destruction uh, we have seen, uh, properties, lives, I recall I saw a video of uh, a doctor who was attending to patients and uh, suddenly uh, a victim was brought in and it was her daughter. And the way she screamed down the hall, you could feel the pain she was feeling at that point. We also recall the story of a reporter whose family was in one of um, the shelters in Gaza and uh, he got the information that his whole family, his wife, his children, when that uh, shelter was attacked, it was his family was wiped off, basically, while, at the, doing, his while doing his job as a journalist. And he rushed into the hospital to just see the corpse of, of his children and his wife. And it was reported that he has eventually returned back to work to continue. Now, you can only imagine the harrowing, harrowing experiences of these persons. On both sides, actually, although Gaza Strip has taken a major chunk of this attack, I mean, you're counting it, 10, over 10,000 persons have been killed in the course of this uh, war between Israel and uh, Palestine or Hamas, as, as some will put it. It's, it's, it's left to be seen what happens in the coming days if Israel, through its Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has kept a hard stance of saying that they were going to occupy Gaza Strip as it is, whichever way it is. Right now, he said the military is at the heart of Gaza Strip. They want to you know, occupy that enclave. But uh, Palestine Authority is saying, you know what, Hamas will no longer have authority in Gaza, we are ready to take charge of the Gaza Strip as it is. And we are hoping that perhaps in the coming days, the voice of um, conscience or consciousness will rule and everybody will shift their swords uh, to addressing this matter. Hopefully, we'll find a solution. The two-state solution is what has been proffered 
uh, for some time now, but um, both sides have not seemingly agreed on that, but hopefully they will in the coming days. We'll have to leave this conversation here now.